Well, good morning. Um, welcome back to Harmony Leadership. Um, we're here at Revolution Church again this morning, and I'm pleased to let you know that I'm here with my dear friend, uh, Theo Bob, from, uh, of course, living here in Eustis, but uh, pastoring a church over in Leesburg in the Mall Legacy Church. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about Facebook this morning, everybody's hot button. Everyone's on Facebook. It's a big deal. Uh, I want to talk about the Facebook the, and how it interacts with the gospel and, and society and all that kind of stuff. So I'm sure a lot of people have questions. I know in my church they do. They're always talking about Facebook. They're always on Facebook. They're always talking about Facebook, whether it's good or bad or whatever. But uh, before we do that, uh, take a minute to let us just let everyone know, you know, a, a little bit about you, a little bit of Legacy Church, where you've been, how long you've been there, what you're doing, all that kind of stuff. Well, thank you, brother. Yeah, man. First of all, thanks for uh, yeah. having me here. It's good to be here with you. Always. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, very blessed. Uh, we Legacy Church started a, approximately four or five years ago. Yeah. Uh, it started out as a Baptist church, and uh, of course we were not yet involved, but there were a group of people who started that church, yeah. planted it in the, mm -hmm. in the Lake Square Mall, mm -hmm. uh, as as they say in the marketplace. Yeah. And uh, about the same time that that was being planned, I was serving at another church, my family and I. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, uh, we felt the uh, led of God to it was time for us to leave that particular. Uh, body and of course it was great. It, it was a great uh, mm -hmm. uh, situation we had there, but it, we felt a, a need a mm -hmm. calling to move beyond and move somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And so for a while we had uh, a group in our home. Mm -hmm. We just called it. We were coming together for Bible study. Yeah, and we did that for months, and then mm -hmm. uh, uh, then I met up. Uh, we were meeting with a group of pastors uh, for breakfast, mm -hmm. and uh, Pastor Buddy was one of those pastors. Yep. So Pastor Luis. And, Good dudes. Uh, they were co-founders. Uh, they helped found uh, the uh, plant the Legacy Church yeah. in the mall. So we talked and talked, and we prayed together, and we spent a lot of time together. Mm -hmm. And uh, we felt it was time for our two groups to come together and just uh, pray about what God may want us to do. By the way, we, we, we all had the same uh, heart about a, a, a multicultural ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we were all we were excited about that and we we all felt called to that so we said let's get the groups together let's talk let's spend time together let's pray together and worship together and out of that uh came uh through much prayer uh, time and prayer we 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 felt it was time for us to become one church right and so there we have it legacy church uh, mm -hmm. uh, i've been fortunate to be the lead pastor you know for the mm -hmm. last three years and uh do a little shameless plug. In the mall, Sunday mornings, what time do you meet? That's right. We meet at 9.30. 9.30, Lake Square Mall in Leesburg. That's right. You should go. Yeah, that's right. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. And, and so we came together as mm -hmm. a, a, a real multicultural group. Yeah. Uh, there were black people, white people, Hispanic, mm -hmm. and... And, and they all got along? Uh, no. Surprisingly. No way. It was amazing because we said, How, can this work? And yeah, said, yeah. I can do anything. Right, yeah. Uh, no, certainly not without problems, but we made a decision that right. we were going to live the gospel. Amen. And we were going we were gonna to spread the gospel. Yes. But people were going to see how we love each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has been a journey, uh, but, it's, but it's really been a, a very... A good journey. It's yeah, been, it's been one in which we work through issues. Right. Uh, we've learned to grow in love to, with each other, and it's it's just worked out for us. Mm -hmm. uh, the numbers hadn't gotten real big. Uh, in fact, some of the uh, Hispanic people uh, stopped coming as much, not because of uh, I don't think they were totally uncomfortable, but there is a, that language barrier. That is hard. We have Pastor Luis who preaches. Uh, at least once a month, and mm -hmm. he, uh, we have a translator. Mm -hmm. And so I think for the Hispanic uh, uh, part of the congregation, it yeah. was just a bit difficult. It's hard. For them. I did that once. Uh, I guess it was, oh, I don't know, four years ago or something like that, I did the Easter sunrise service for oh, Tavares, yes. um, for the city of Tavares. Yes. And what I didn't know, last minute they threw it on me, is that, oh, by the way, he's translating for you because his whole Spanish ministry is here. And there was like, 150 Spanish yeah. folks, and he's trying to translate for me. And you and I have spent a little time together. You know, when I get preaching, it's like you get you get going. You know, the same way. You're not a yeah. real, you know, quiet guy when you're talking. Right. Um, and so I'm the same way. And I don't speak in three or four words and stop. Three or four words and stop. Like that's hard to do. Yeah, it is. And so I actually, I think I made some people mad that day because I, in the middle of my message, 
I literally looked at the guy. I said, all right, sir, you need to go sit down. I can't do this. Oh. I, I, it was like, he was a great dude. The people were great. I, I was physically incapable of stopping every three or four words because I can't, my train of thought was gone. Like I, I couldn't even talk. It, it is hard. It is different. so hard. Very difficult. And, and, you know, I didn't realize that. I, yeah. you know, I'm so used to, I'm like, you know, I'm just so used to preaching. Yeah. I'm thinking, okay, just preaching. And I, and I found I had to do that little pause and thing. But, That's hard. You know, even that, we still, we, we, I won't say we eventually perfected it, but, yeah. but it got better. It yeah. It got better. So now we're at the point where once a month, but, but the, the painful part was that a lot of the Hispanic family stopped coming. Yeah. Spanish speaking family stopped coming. So, uh, Pastor Luis, uh, of course, he's from Venezuela, and, mm -hmm. and, and he's just what, so, what a loving. Oh, I love that dude. I, want, I just want to listen. I wish he was here just so he oh, could pray. Absolutely. I could sit and listen to him pray all day. Absolutely. Yeah. And so he and his wife, Maida, they're still ministering yeah. to, to families, uh, Spanish-speaking families, uh, and we still do have some that come, but uh, people will sometimes come through the mall and they say, gee, what's going on there? Yeah. Of course, a, a, a different groups of people just loving on each other yeah. and, and sharing the word. It's awesome. Breaking bread together. Yeah. On this, uh, Sundays where we have lunch. Yeah. So it, it, it has grown into yeah. a, a, just a very loving family. Yeah. Uh, That's and good. Of course, we've also uh, began to do some outreach. So. Yeah. So, but legacy is, uh, we want to leave a legacy. Yeah. Right, of a community church, body of Christ that just love on people. With all types of people. And show the love of Christ in yeah. the community, wherever that might be. Yeah. yeah. Well, we want to talk today about Facebook, which is an enormous part of our culture. But you said something a minute ago, and I, we'll get to Facebook in a minute, but you said something about a multicultural church yes. and that we want to live out the gospel. Maybe you can expand on that a little bit. My, and this is my heart, too. You know, that's why we're buddies. Right. And so right. I'm, I'm, this is, I'm setting you up here because <laughs> yeah. I want to talk about it, but I want you to talk about it. When you talk about living out the gospel and multicultural, it's almost like redundant yeah, because yeah. the gospel absolutely is multicultural because it's for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. so maybe you can expand a little bit on, on, like, you know in your church, you read the book, you know in the church there should be black, white, this, that, all that. But it doesn't seem to go that way. Usually churches are very homogenized, one type of people, one type of community, and they're limited. So how does, a, how does a black man get with a white guy and a Spanish guy and, and build and work towards what that gospel says about a multicultural thing? How do you get there? I mean, because I mean, you have to be intentional, obviously. You've got to work towards that. What are some things that you feel like you guys needed to do or need to do to build that? Well, we, we found that the real key to it is building relationships. Mm -hmm. Pastor Luis and Pastor Bud and I, we started just friendships. Uh, uh, we started our friendship about, uh, I would say, three, four years prior to, right. to us coming together as, right. as a church, mm -hmm. as the same uh, pastors in the same church. But yeah. we were friends long before then. Yeah. We came to know each other. We, we spent a lot of time together. Our families spent time together. And it was just a natural thing for us. You know, we, so we, we, we were able to overcome a lot of the cultural differences mm -hmm. long before we became, you know... Uh, you were just Theo to them. You weren't black Absolutely. Theo. Absolutely. You were Theo. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The same thing. And, and we learned so much from each other. Mm -hmm. And we began to recognize and appreciate each other's strengths. Mm -hmm. See, and that's, that's a key to it in our culture. If we can li learn to understand and appreciate people for their strength, mm -hmm. Not focus on the differences, right. the colors, and all that stuff. But if we can truly, in the body of Christ, and I believe that the key to the uh, racial healing in our country amen. lies with the people of God. Oh, amen. Coming together. It's got to start and, here. You know, that, that's that's the, the key to it. Mm -hmm. In relationship. Yeah. Because in re through relationships, it break we break down the walls of fear. Because really, the 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 the, the, the whole problem with racial. Uh, Division has to mm -hmm. do with fear. Mm -hmm. we f we're afraid of what we don't know. Yeah. But when we come to know individuals, mm -hmm. in particularly in the body of Christ, we see the Spirit of God. Yeah. And it, and, and, and no it transcends the color transcends of their skin. The color. Yeah, yeah, transcends yeah. The color. Right. It transcends all right. Of so now we're, we're brothers and sisters of right. Christ. Right. You know? Yeah. And so that's the key to it. And for us, that started long before we were worshiping together in the yeah. church. Yeah. Our, our culture has, and I know it's probably not in 
meant to happen, but you've got like um, Democrat and Republican and Libertarian and this and, and uh, you live in the South and you live in the North yeah, and you right. have all these different teams that, you know, you're Gator and I'm a Seminole right. and you have all these. And what we don't realize is that these things, although they, they're fun and we rejoice and oh, we celebrate, yeah. Yeah. but they really do, if you, if you melt it, they're dividing us. Yeah. But with, with, with Christianity, you know, there's, there's something that brings us together. And, and so Jesus Christ goes to the cross to reconcile all people to the Father and then recon reconcile all people together. And, you know, as well as I do, you know, you read in the Bible, it talks about that there's no such, in, in this new life, there's, there's, there's no Jew and Gentile and barbarian and uncivilized and slave and free. It's like all one. And so it brings us together. Yeah. Um, and so I, I love when I meet, uh, another Christian from like another part of the country like my wife had uh, we met with their cousin with her cousins last night they're from Philly and we sit I, this is the first time I've ever met them but we sit there and we just talk about Jesus in our churches it's like instant bond instant bond instant bond he is my brother I yeah I mean like I end up hugging him and saying I love you and leaving like I, I haven't met, known him for an hour but I do I honestly do like there's just that connection you know and it's just a, it's a wonderful thing so what, what other, like, when you go into, to your, I mean, you guys meet and you organize things and stuff, what other things do you think churches need to do to be intentional to attract black, white, Hispanic, Asian, this, that? How do you get them all in one room? Well, I, I think, again, I talked about building relationships. And I yeah. think early on we have to understand that this is not going to be comfortable. Yeah. We are definitely reaching out of our comfort zone. We have to be resolved that we'll do that. Yes. Willing to lose some people. For willing, the sake, yeah. Willing to lose some people. Yeah. Because we, we understand that it's important, the gospel is more important, and our Christian walk is more important than what the culture is telling us. So we have to go into it understanding that it's going to be uncomfortable for a while. Yeah. Okay, but God is call, calling us to stretch mm -hmm. and to grow. And the more we do it, the, the easier it becomes. Yeah. And, and the pleasure from that is, as you said, no longer referring to yeah. people as, you know, the black Theo or the what. It, it's not about that. It's right. About the, it's about Christ. Yeah, who's it's in about you. about the family. Yeah, and amen. So, but, but I do want to say now, now, be careful. You got to be careful. I'm, I'm, I'm never called a gator, so please be careful right. of that. I'm a, <laughs> And the funny thing, we, we you got to have a line. Yeah, that's right. But it's funny we should say that. But, but I, I recall over the years, uh, there have been so many of our Christian brothers and sisters uh, who one on the Gator side and one on the uh, FSU side. And every now and then somebody said, hey, what about Miami to you? And I yeah. said, well, I'm Florida and them. But, yeah. but the real deal is we've had some great times because we'll talk about the schools and the yeah. football, the sports and all right. that. But it always come back to one thing. Yeah. We're together in Christ. Amen. And that's the yeah. key. That's, yeah. that's the great thing about it. Yeah. We were, uh, at our church here, we're passionate about this too, and uh, racial reconciliation. One of the things that, that, that we did is uh, we used you. <laughs> we, I had you preach here. Yeah, I God. took a church, and our church is predominantly white. There's some other folks in it too, but my heart's the same thing. I want to see a church. In this community, there are all diff different types of people, so that should be represented in the church. That's right. If we were in a, a community that was strictly 100% one type, yes. I can understand, but that's not the case here in Eustis. And so uh, we've got a lot of different people in our community, so I, liter I had you come preach. I want, I want this black man to preach <laughs> to the white folks so they can see what you're talking about. Yes. That, that's right. Because you know, when you first walk up, I'm sure they're going, hey, there's a black dude. But when you leave the pulpit, what they heard was the gospel. That's right. And so to, That's right. to retrain their mind to think that it's about Jesus, it's not about right. Theo. Exactly. And so that's what we did. Um, I had another dear brother, Steve Yates, another black man up in Leesburg. I had him come preach. So we're intentionally right. trying to blend and, and create that type of atmosphere where they do get used to it and they don't see your color anymore. Um, but what I, what I love is we is 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 not to try to make black people white or white right. people black That's but right. to embrace exactly the differences as 
one of the facets on the many facets of this bigger diamond, which is the body of Christ. The body of Christ. So there's nothing wrong with all the history and the traditions of the black man yes. or the white man, but we can actually come together and not try to get rid of those, exactly. but to celebrate those and rejoice and share those things. I want to know about you. I want you to know about me. So it is an intentional thing and you have to, you have to stick with it and you will lose people, but it's for the good. It is it's absolutely for the, for the good. And I, I, and I'm with you. It's just so great when we can do that, when we can overcome that stuff. Yeah. We, we're not asking people to change who you are and how God Not made. at all. Yeah, okay. We, we, we couldn't do that anyway, but, but it's not. What we want to do is really learn about each other's cultures and where we come from. And we say, oh, okay, we learned something from that. Absolutely. It helps us to grow closer together and love each other. Mm -hmm. But the main thing, again, is, is the body of Christ. Yeah. We're in the family. I had, um, when we started this process a while back, well, there's a, a gentleman in our church, his name is Greg, and he's a 60-something-year-old black man. Okay, okay. And I didn't even know. And I went up to him one day, I said, can I call you a black man? <laughs> or do, what, what do I, you know, because you got Archie Bunker back in the yeah, day oh, saying yeah, the yeah, colored that's folks. Right, that's and, right. and then when I grew up in my hometown, yeah. we were, it was a predominantly Jewish town and we called, it was a terrible word, but they were schwatzes. That's, it's a negative word. Oh, okay. Uh, but we had these words, you know, and you have, so like, so I'm thinking, well, I want to make sure that we have a multicultural church too, but like, if I stand at that pulpit and say, well, I'd like to have black people here, that's good, right? It's good, but maybe that's the wrong thing to say. Like, I didn't know anything about anybody. So, okay. but you have to, so I literally had to go up to him and ask him because I love him and I want people to come and share the good news and be a part of that. And so I was like, what am I, am I doing wrong, Greg? He's like, just call me um, a dark-skinned gentleman. Right. I was like, Okay. Right. That, that'll work. Like you have to, you can't assume anything. You gotta, you gotta really engage in people's lives and ask them. You know, it's it's almost like with your wife. Like, don't assume what makes her happy. Ask exactly. her. You know what I mean? And so I've had to actually do that to some of the folks in the church. Like, how do I engage you? What do I say? You know? And because I care enough to know, I want to know. So, and but what's nice is that they've been very gracious and and sharing it's, and not being upset with that. And just say, hey, yeah, just, just call me dark skin gentleman. I'm, Listen, we're supposed to cool. talking about Facebook, but yeah. you bring out some great points. See, here's the thing. I think that the way we begin to grow in relationship is that I need to feel comfortable to be able to ask you the questions I yeah. need to know. I want to know about you. Like, as you said, I want to know about you so, I can, uh, so we can grow together. And I think for a lot of people, it's very uncomfortable because it they is. don't know what, what should I call you or you're black. Well, we're afraid. Yeah, yeah, we're afraid. I'm afraid. Uh, I'm when afraid. I first went to the neighborhood back here, yeah. I was literally afraid <laughs> to go in there. But here's the thing. I've never had a bad interaction with a black man. Exactly. That whole persona of, oh, yeah. the big black man's going to, yeah. like, in the hood. <laughs> but yet I've never had that experience. But right. yet, right. but this culture has poured that into me that I should be scared of sure. the black man and yeah. his neighborhood. But I personally have never had a bad experience. So right. I'm walking in there going, why the heck am I afraid? Like, I, I have no reason to be afraid. I've never been beat up. I've never That's been right. bothered. But, right. and then, I, you know, I was like, what am I? And, but then you took me to King's, and so I was all oh, solved. man, we had a great time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, and, and, and I tell you, so, so many times people just say, I'm, I'm afraid to ask. And that's why I always tell people, listen, when you're talking, to me, if it's something you want, ask. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. And so after a while, we start talking, and, and, yeah. and that part goes away. The fear goes away. So now every time we interact, mm -hmm. I'm just your brother. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's a, it's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that so many people are just afraid. And, and by the way, I you know, people say, oh, you, what, like, what do you like to be called, African-American, black? Or, or you can just call me Phil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we only know one African American anyway. It's yeah. Shannon. You Shannon? He's the only African American I know. See, you're here. And they said, but, 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 don't you, aren't you of African descent? I said, no, I'm of Eustace descent. Eustace. So, yeah. so what do we call you? Yeah. Theo. Theo's good. You know? Yeah. So, that's what my mom called yeah. me. So, yeah. You can call me Theo. That's right. Yeah. You call me some other names. Yeah. <laughs> Off the but, record, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so that's the whole key to it. Yeah. It's relationship. Mm -hmm. we, we, we walk together, we eat together. Yeah. We, we spend time together. Yeah. And then a lot of the 
superficial uh, cultural things fall off. Yeah. Not that we forget our culture, but the most important thing becomes the gospel, the gospel. Of Jesus. Yeah, the gospel yeah. Of Jesus. If they see us doing it outside of church too, like it's one thing to bring them yeah. into the church and have black, white, black, white, yeah. Latino, Asian, you know, in here it's one thing. But yeah. if if uh, one of the things I think is really important is that once the service, if you will, ends, that like for you, you're in the mall. Like so, yeah. what better than after the service ends and you've got this multicultural group to then go to the food court, right? It. And you're eating together and, right. and, and all these different types of people eating together, right. people see it and they're like, wow, that's really interesting. Like that yeah. doesn't happen here. And so if you're intentional about it, one of the other things that we've talked about here is you know, intentionally um, pursuing different types of music too. Yes. Um, every group Very seems cool. to have their own style of music. Um, I, I, I don't admit it to everyone, but I'm a, I'm a, I still consider myself a young man, but I, I am a closet Gaither fan. I, I love the Gaithers. Like, okay. I'm into that. Okay. Our church never plays that kind of stuff. Um, well, they've played a few times. And I sit there in the back and I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't let everyone know because, you know, we got to be hip and new and, oh, and cool, you know. So, but I'm a closet Gaither fan. But every group of people has their own type of music. And so one of the things we've talked about is intentionally going after those types of um, uh, genres so that when people do walk in of different uh, ethnicities, they hear their music being played and they feel like they're wanted and welcomed and expected. Absolutely. And so that's something that we've uh, strived to do. But we have gotten pushback from that yes. from the homogenized, middle-aged white people. Okay. And, and they say, like, why are we playing that? And, and, and I've had to just hammer that. This is what we're doing. Yeah. Because we're going after people that aren't here. Mm -hmm. And we still have, uh, I won't say issues of battles, but we do uh, about that very same thing. Uh, to be very intentional about uh, the different genres of, of, of gospel and, and Christian music. Now, uh, you said something earlier that, that really resonated with me. You were talking about... Uh, how we do it intentional. It's very intentional. But after a while, when we're intentional about it and we consistently do that, mm -hmm. after a while it just becomes nature. Oh, yeah. It becomes part of, yeah. you know, of who we are and what we do. And, and that's where those things, those differences fall off. Yeah. And now we're still intentional, whereas it was harder before, it's just who we are. Mm -hmm. And, the, and when, the, when the culture around us see, see that, oh my, yeah. they're drawn to that. Yeah. They're drawn to that. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, you and your wife, very active in Eustis, obviously have been for about 150, 160 years. Yeah, according right? to my daughter, yeah. back when Moses was here. Yeah, there. yes. The, the other Moses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, so what do you, um, and I know, uh, I know that your heart is, is here to, to, to do something in, in Eustis. Yeah. If you could take a minute and share about your... 26 years ago and all that stuff oh, and, yeah. and what you believe God wants you to be a part of and, and tell a little bit about the landscape of Eustace and yes. what we're up against and so those people that are hearing it from different churches can see you know how can we pray how can we go to our pastor and say hey you know what I, um, I want to help with that I want to how can we help this so maybe share a little bit about that it's a strange thing I you know I tell people you know I share with people my testimony is when God brought me back here. I was probably hadn't been saved about three or four years. Mm -hmm. And uh, when God uh, spoke to my heart about returning back here to Eustace where I grew up. And, of course, uh, I was like, uh, Moses and everybody said, not me. You got yeah. your own guy. Yeah. Because I knew when I left here at, at 19 years old and Eustace, uh, again, having grown up here uh, all through the uh, desegregation thing and it was tough because I'm going, I don't want to go back to Eustis because there's a black and white divide still. You know, I was in the military, I come home and visit, and it's like, this place really hadn't changed a whole lot. So, from the start, didn't want to do it. Of course, yeah. you know, as you know, when we Yeah, disagree that's where with God, God's going to say. Who, we know who wins. <laughs> okay? yeah. I don't want to win the lottery, Lord. I <laughs> do right. not. I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as a result of just obeying God and yeah. being here. Uh, the, the, the word that God gave me before he brought me, he said, be a bridge. You know the community. You grew up there. You know the 
I'll call it illnesses. You yeah. know the, the, the division that's going on there. He says, well, I'm going to use you as a bridge. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I grew up in one community, but new people in the other community survived, not only survived, but thrived during this uh, time of desegregation. So mm -hmm. I understand the dynamics. Yeah. And so God gave me the vision. He said, come back. You're going to be the bridge in your community because you know this community. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to empower you. Yeah to love on people and to be the bridge mm -hmm. and man that just lit my fire i mean yeah. for a place i didn't want to go all yeah. sudden, didn't want to be anywhere else. <laughs> right, right. And here i am 24 years later but but you know it was the old orange avenue and every 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 city has an orange avenue mm -hmm. that's the dividing line yeah there are white people on this side and black people on this side and, and, and spanish-speaking people wherever they can get in yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and so uh and i was very much aware of that yeah and so and so God began to just show me, even before I returned, he began to show me Orange Avenue. He's like every night almost. I was yeah. having dreams about Orange Avenue and being the bridge. Yeah. God, what does that mean, being the bridge? Bringing my people together yeah. so that the world can see Amen. what my people look like, yeah. what I look like in the flesh. Uh, they will know us by what yeah. I love each other. Yeah. So Amen. Said, okay, Lord. So it, it started out with my... Uh, end up being called to the ministry. I yeah. didn't know that it was going to entail all of that. Yeah. But once God called me to the ministry, and my first church I served was a little black Methodist church. Can yeah. you imagine that? Yeah. And for me, it, it was strange. See, because yeah. God really, my whole Christian experience, God, I, I came to the Lord in New Orleans, Louisiana, of all places, mm -hmm. in a huge white church. So my experiences, my, my Christian foundation had come out of predominantly large and predominantly white churches. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, it wasn't that, hey, he's one of the few black ones. It, was, it wasn't like that at all. Yeah. It was here we are praising and worshiping yeah. together. They didn't see your color. It was, it was not yeah. about color. Yeah. It was about God doing yeah. the thing in us. Yeah. And so out of that, and so when I came back and, 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 and I felt God calling me to pastor this little black church. Yeah. Like, this can't be it. Yeah. But that was it. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. And God said, God. But that was it. And, and God said, yeah. it was showing me that, okay, you reestablish wh where you grew up. Yeah. Same community I grew up. He says, you, 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 I'm going to reestablish you there. Uh, you know, there were people who didn't, at first didn't know who I was, but they said, who was that? Yeah. And then it's, oh, that's Thelma. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, that's yeah, it. yeah, He's yeah. Going yeah. up and go yeah. to college and come back. Yeah. 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 So once people began, and God just gave my wife and I extreme favor mm -hmm. in the community where we grew up. And, of course, we already knew a lot of other people, yeah. uh, other people who were different, you know, ethnic groups, uh, yeah. white and other groups. Yeah. And because we went to high school, we went to school here and, yeah. and, and graduated here. So uh, because of that, God was able to, to uh, use us. And my wife also was an educator in the schools. I was an educator mm -hmm. at one time in the school. In fact, my first uh, job was in the school uh, as, mm -hmm. as a dean. And it's amazing because the kids, I would ask them, what's, what's your last name? And they'd tell me, I said, oh, your grandparents and your uncle and your aunt. I went to school with them. Yeah. And black, white, all of them. And yeah. they go, wow. Yeah. Who is this guy? Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Know. yeah. But that was God. He was affirming, reaffirming yeah. again. Hey, you know this place you know people so he began to use me he was leveraging and, and you what was really amazing is yes. that i met a, another i met a, another brother named uh uh he was a youth pastor named doug edwards but mm -hmm. well, doug edwards was the youth pastor at a quote-unquote white church mm -hmm. but the uh, funny thing he would visit the schools mm -hmm. and he invited me to his youth uh group mm -hmm. which was a middle school night mm -hmm. tuesday night and those kids after I shared my testimony, those kids gathered around me and prayed for me. My life was forever. I was so convinced. I knew then that God, this is where I want you. This is it. And from there, it just took off. The, the relationships that we had in high school began to rekindle. Yeah. Uh, it just, God just did a tremendous work. Yeah. It's not that we're where we need to be. Right. But, but, but it just empowered me to go forward yeah. and be, be, try to be the bridge in this mm -hmm. community. Yeah. How can... How can the uh, everyday Joe, you know, Joe Screwdriver Christian who may watch this thing, how can we engage in that fight to, to reconcile and to, to uh, bring the races together? Mm -hmm. How can we partner with you? How can we 
partner with Jesus? What can we do? Well, you know, I think everything starts with prayer. We mm -hmm. pray, say, Lord, what is it in me that's keeping me from going forward to do your will? Because I know you want me to love people, all people. So, Lord, the first thing we do is say, Lord, I pray. Whatever it is in me that's hindering me from doing that yeah. and loving freely, Lord, move it. Yeah. You know? So, and then we pray, and then God begins to uh, uh, allow us to, uh, to develop these relationships yeah. intentionally. Yeah. And then we begin to reach out to others. And mm -hmm. like you and I, and, and other pastors in, in, in this group, Harmony, mm -hmm. we, we meet because, first of all, we, we're pastors, but we're brothers in Christ, and mm -hmm. we're able to meet and be free about how we feel about things and issues, yeah. as, as we said we're going to talk about it and got there yet, but Facebook, all mm -hmm. those kinds of things. Because uh, and once we start doing that, and again, people see us together, it's so amazing. So what can we do? We can begin to say, Lord, help me to get beyond myself. Yeah. My own uh, prejudice against, you know, right. Jewish, black, whatever. But Lord, yeah. examine me. Mm -hmm. And Lord, take out that which is not. Yeah. Now, Lord, give me opportunities. Yeah. And, and as we do that, God will provide those opportunities. And, and we'll, we'll be surprised at how close and how mm -hmm. readily available those opportunities are. Yeah. And when we just start uh, being ourselves and take uh, advantage of those opportunities, and that's the key to it, I think. And I said being ourselves. God made us all unique, as we said. Yeah. Uh, I don't have to pretend that I'm a white guy. I mean, yeah. I'm not, that's not my goal, and that's not, it's really not important. Right. And, and vice versa. But, yeah. but who I am is, 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 is a child of God. I, yeah. I am... A, a son of the king and so are you yeah. and we recognize that and we're we're on the same level in terms of uh our relationship with god yeah and uh and our late relationship with each other our brothers. Yeah. Yeah. so so what we do is we we begin to do that and we yeah. reach out to each other and we so and after yeah. a while as i said earlier like we in our church it becomes easier and easier we're intentional mm -hmm. and then it becomes easier and easier to reach out and say hey that's just my brother but, but, we, but, but people must be allowed to be themselves. Right. Who they are. Who God mm. made us. True that. Yeah. True that. Let me, uh, I want to close and I want to read this. Uh, I just think this is just, a, this is apropos. This is just, this hits it right on the head. Mm -hmm. um, I, this, I'm getting old, man. I can't even read this. Uh, oh, my goodness. Colossians 3.11. Uh, in this new life, so, uh, you know, when we get saved, we, we're a new life, we're a new creation. Right. So it says, in this right. new life, it doesn't matter if you are Jew or Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free, Christ is all that matters and he lives in all of us. All and so that be, that's our story and we're sticking with it. So that's embrace right. all people, love them, and uh, if your pastor and the leadership of your church wants to go after different people and, and share the good news with them, support them, pray for that guy, and help him with everything that he wants to do. All right? Thanks, brother. Thank Have a good well. one. Love, Love you, man. Love See you. ya. All right.